The way we consume and share news today it is largely rooted in social media outlets, a reason why we decided it's important to look at what's being discussed online, from the hottest issues to trends and certainly some controversies. We're joined by Erica for our Social Media Minute. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday. Yes, happy Friday. <laughs> Another one bites the dust. Yep. We've already passed the halfway point of March, if you can believe it. Yes. Yep. Uh, <laughs> beauty of a live show. Time just just slips through my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> but looking forward to the weekend, of course. <laughs> Myself included. Yep. All right, let's jump into our first buzzword of the day. Soul City has plans to open up a colonial era tram track to the mm-hmm. public, a first time in decades. Yep. Of course, what does the plan exactly entail? We're really curious yeah so um these japanese colonial era tram tracks uh that were recently discovered mm. in Gwanghwamun uh were shown to the public for the first time yesterday yeah. um they were found as uh, two uh, well two organizations well one is the Seoul metropolitan government and the other is the cultural heritage administration uh they carried out joint excavation work near the Gwanghwamun gate mm. Since September last year, as part of this historical restoration project, and uh, this whole project is part of that broader scheme to renovate the entire Gwanghwamun uh. Square area uh, to create more leisure and walking space in the, in our very very busy city. I was gonna say it's yeah. gonna be a nightmare for drivers. Yes. But hey, you gotta make room. Now, one of the key things they're trying to do here mm. is they're trying to bring back a terrace called Walte. Uh, that well used to be outside Gwanghwamun Gate of Gyeongbokgung Palace, uh, where kings would hold public rituals. Okay, is anyone else kind of blown away by the fact that they had a terrace yeah. at that time? Okay, I'm sure it looked a little bit different, but the idea is pretty similar, right? Uh, tell us more about the terrace structure. Yes, yeah, so this terrace, it's I guess it's sort of like a stage, a plat, an <laughs> elevated platform. Okay. It was about 48.7 meters long. And and uh, almost 30 meters wide. Mm. Uh, it was a stone paved platform that was built in front of uh, the main palace building. Mm. Uh, it's, it was raised above its surrounding area by about five steps. Okay. Uh, it had stone railings on its eastern and western sides. Um, the Volte of the Kwanghwamun Gate was uh, believed to be be have been built around uh, the reign of the king of King Sejong between 1418 mm-hmm. and 1450. It was used as a main venue for various events held by the court. Mm-hmm. For example, a banquet held to welcome foreign envoys, uh-huh. or military examinations held in the presence of the king, or a crown prince granting crops to the people as a uh-huh. gift, and also a venue for greeting the return of war heroes. Okay, it so, does work like a stage. Exactly. Okay. So it was an it was an area where lots of celebratory <laughs> events took place and very official formal events as well. Now, part of this world day was restored in 2011, but it was insignificant. Mm. People didn't really notice. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I was going to say, right. I mean, about 50 meters mm. and 30 meters. It's just it doesn't feel that massive. Mm-hmm. And human eyes we're unless we're trained to notice these things. Yep. I don't think we take a closer look. Everyone anyway. is just walking right past toward it. where they're supposed to go. <laughs> they don't look around. <laughs> People are so busy. I know. So turn around. Yep. Look at the war day. It means something. Uh, I wonder what happened to the original structure and do we know when it was destroyed? Yes. Um, Japanese imperialists are believed to have destroyed the war day in the 1920s and other historical facilities around Gwanghwamun Gate uh, during their occupation of Korea. Uh, they laid in place a set of tram tracks ah. and uh, these tracks were buried underground in the 60s when this Hejongno underpass was built. Okay, so now the Seoul City government is offering a tour yes. of these excavation sites. That's right. So the Seoul City government said it's going to offer a tour of the site to the first 270 people who apply to participate. Mm. Uh, the tours are going to take place three days uh, this week uh, from Thursday to Saturday. Mm. So 
well, we already passed Thursday. So today <laughs> and Saturday, uh, three sessions are planned for each day uh, and 30 people will be allocated to each session. Mm-hmm. And for those who happen to miss out on their chance to join these tours, uh, Seoul City is planning to upload an online video next yeah. month explaining the cultural significance of the Kwanghwamun Gate area and these uh, historical artifacts that they have uh, uncovered so far. Mm-hmm. Uh, the a- artifacts facts eventually will be preserved and exhibited at the square once the restoration work is complete. Okay, so do we know when the excavation work will wrap up and when will the construction of the Uarte be completed? <laughs> yes, the joint excavation project is expected to wrap up by the end of April and the restoration work on Uarte is going to take place until October mm. and uh, that is when the entire area will be open to the public. And I'm sure that there will be all kinds of photo op leading up to That's it. Right. We'll let you know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> On to our second buzzword of the day. A proposal for the world's first octopus farm in Spain. It's alarming scientists uh, taking into consideration... Octopus are surprisingly smart. Yeah. Octopi? Octop. Well, well, I don't know. Some people say octopi. Some, some say oct- both, oct- octopuses. I think both yeah. are okay, actually. Uh, they're as intelligent as cats, apparently. Really? Yep. And uh, we're going to get into the details okay. about this farm and why it's raising so much alarm for okay. scientists. So what we know so far is that a farm in the Canary Islands mm. in Spain uh, is building, is planning to raise around one million Mm. octopuses every year for food to be distributed all over the world, Uh. uh, South Korea included, because we love our octopus. (laughs) Now, octopuses caught in the wild... Uh, using pots or lines or traps are eaten all around the world, mm. uh, including in the Mediterranean area, very popular there mm. in Asia, of course, in Latin America. But they have never been intensively farmed before. And uh, some scientists call the proposed icy water slaughtering method cruel okay. and inhumane. Now, the Spanish multinational company behind all of this plan uh, denies that the, the creatures will suffer. So they have a humane way to well, farm these octopus. Well, that's what they're saying. Okay. Um, and uh, anyways, the race mm. to discover the secret behind breeding octopuses in captivity, it's mm. apparently been going on for decades. I wonder why we didn't have a breakthrough mm. because the demand for octopuses' food has always yes. been there, as you've said, in so many different parts of the world. So it raises questions like, is it actually really difficult to farm octopuses in a closed environment? Yes. So here's what I discovered. Okay. Um, apparently, uh, the larvae of octopus only eat live food and uh, they need a carefully controlled environment. Mm. But the company, Nueva Pescanova, the company behind this proposed project, uh, announced in 2019 that it had made a scientific breakthrough. Okay. Now, the prospect of uh intensively farming octopus has already led to a lot of opposition. Mm. For example, lawmakers in the U.S. state of Washington have proposed banning the pra- practice before <sighs> it even starts. That's in a different part of the world. Yeah. Of course, I ask, do they have the authority to do that? They can certainly stop imports from coming in, but they can't start uh, stop a Spanish company. Maybe they're, they're concerned that perhaps a similar practice will mm. you know, happen start happening in the U.S. in different parts yeah. of the world. Okay, then let's ask the most important question. Why are so many people opposed to the idea of an octopus farm? Yes, so uh, Nueva Pescanova's plans reveal that these octopuses, which are solitary animals, Mm. uh, they're used to the dark. They like dark spots. It would be kept in tanks with other octopuses, many other octopuses, at times under constant light. Okay. Um, so that's two strikes. Yes, so they're, so, they're lone wolves and you're placing them with many other. Yes. They like darkness. Yep. They'll be exposed to too much light. Yes, exactly. And uh, the octopuses would be housed in around 1,000 communal tanks in this uh, two-story building mm-hmm. in the port of Las Palmas in Gran Canaria. And they would be killed by being put in containers of water kept at minus three degrees Celsius. 
Now, let me explain why this is a problem. Yes. Currently, there are no welfare rules in place because they have never been commercially farmed before. However, studies have shown that this method of slaughtering the octopus Mm. uh, using ice slurry causes a slow, stressful death. Okay, so there are enough studies indicating that this is probably not the most ethical way to kill octopus. Yes. So scientists say large numbers of octopuses, first of all, should never be kept together Mm. in close proximity. Uh, doing this leads to a lot of stress, mm. conflict, and even high mortality. Uh, a figure of uh, 10 to 15 percent mortality should not be acceptable for any kind of farming, mm-hmm. according to scientists. But that also raises questions of yep. waste and sustainability, too. It's, I mean, because we're talking about octopus as food, I understand why there will be a demand for farms, yep. but 10 to 15 percent mortality is too high. It's wasteful, too. Exactly. So the Aquaculture Stewardship Council, which is the leading farmed seafood certification mm-hmm. scheme, is proposing a ban unless these fish are stunned beforehand. Some supermarkets, like large supermarket chains, mm-hmm. have already moved away from selling fish that have been killed using uh, ice, including Tesco's and Morrison's. Maybe taking into the fact that yep. that's not the most humane way right. to kill the fish. Mm. Okay. You uh, know, uh, it sounds more cruel, but uh, the way the fishermen have been traditionally killing octopuses is like clubbing the octopus over the head. That is apparently a more humane method of killing them. It's funny because what you don't know, you wouldn't yep. understand because that doesn't look humane to right. But, you know, that it kills the octopus instantly, I suppose, as opposed to a slow death, which mm-hmm. is the death by this cold yep. ice water, right? I'm not sure if it's fair for me to bring up my octopus teacher, but I mean, in that documentary, (sighs) of course, that octopus was not meant for food. It's a different story, Mm. but it attaches very, very human emotions to this octopus living in the wild, going to the fact that how intelligent are these creatures. I don't want to attach sentimental value to food. I mean, because we have to eat, but, uh, you know, watching that, that movie. Yeah. Oh, it, it, it made me think a lot. And it's supposed to make you think. Yeah. I mean, not not that all of us have to go vegetarian. That's wildly unrealistic. Right. But I mean, it's an angle to consider. If they're this smart, should there be a better way mm-hmm. to catch them, farm them, if there is a plan? Yeah. All right. On to our final story today. Elderly penguins resteem really custom yeah. <laughs> lenses in a world's first cataract surgery. Yeah. So three Ooh. elderly penguins from a zoo in Singapore have undergone successful cataract surgery. They've also received new custom-made lenses <laughs> as well. And this is the first known time the procedure has been done for animals successfully. So six penguins, three of them are king penguins and three are Humboldt penguins uh, from Jurong Bird Park, uh, had the surgery to enhance their sight, to improve <laughs> their quality of life. Um, only the three penguins, however, received the artificial lens, which is a world first. I mean, that's fascinating, the fact that we can do this. But I do wonder why king penguins. Yeah, they were chosen for the procedure because, you know, there are larger species. They have uh, eyes large and stable enough to hold these custom lenses Mm. in place. Now, these lenses were apparently created in Germany Mm. to fit each penguin's eye based on their measurements. So they're (laughs) custom made. They took about two months to complete. Now, this surgery is a very delicate procedure. And additionally, penguins have something called a third eyelid that protects them underwater which have made it really difficult for vets to access the penguins' eyes. However, this time they were able to sort of work <laughs> through the challenges. We're streaming the images. Yeah. And I mean, maybe it's because it's penguins. It's it's just funny the way they're measuring <laughs> the eyes or how bad their eyes are doing. Yeah. And then the, the insert. How are the penguins doing post-surgery? You know, it's been about two months since they've had their <laughs> surgery. And uh, they're currently back with their colony at the Jurong Bird Park. And uh, this is amazing. Since they've had their surgery, surgery, uh, they're more active than before. And these are elderly penguins, right? And the fact that they're active shows that uh, their their vision is probably improved. Uh, look at that. Yeah. As long as we can hold on to their visions, right? <laughs> I just, I'm kind of mind blown that we did this to penguins. I know. Some good in the world, using <laughs> tech and science to save the... Yeah. Penguin species. <laughs> and their eyesight yeah. anyway. Thank you very much, Erica. Pleasure as always. Have a good weekend. You too. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.